Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Gedling series. This is a small district to the east of Nottingham and it only has 12 of them. Mind you, it's got some belters. Let's take a look. Hello folks, welcome to the district of Gedling for the very first time. This is the first of its 12 parishes and I'm standing outside something that I have been given access to film. It's not very often I get that. Have a look at this building here. Now, if you watched my Newark and Sherwood series, you'll remember in the Ollerton and Booton episode, the special section there was all about a pumping house, a pumping station. And this one is very similar to that one, but this one's been turned into a museum and you'll find it in the parish of Papplewick. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to Gedling, everyone. We begin this small district of Nottinghamshire with Papplewick, and I reckon there was no better place to start. A small village, it lies seven and a half miles north of Nottingham and six miles south of Mansfield. In the Middle Ages, the village marked the southern gateway to Sherwood Forest. It's within a loosely defined area known as the Hidden Valleys, an area of interesting historical and scenic value between Nottingham and Mansfield. Once again, we're in a place with some Robin Hood themed legends, as Papplewick is said to be the burial place of Alan Adale, another of the outlaw's merry men. Papplewick is a lovely place. Most of its historic core is a conservation area and it's full of fabulous 18th century cottages. Amenities wise, it has a village hall, an ancient church and a pub called the Griffin's Head. Tourist attractions in the parish include Papplewick Hall and the pretty Papplewick Trail, which even has some waterfalls. However, we're beginning this episode at the parish's biggest and best landmark in my opinion. Papplewick Pumping Station, which I was lucky enough to be allowed access to to film. Built to pump clean water to a reservoir which would supply the city of Nottingham, it's one of those places that's a must if you visit. It's a wonderful part of the county, all ends up, so let's go and check it out. We begin at Papplewick Pumping Station, which used to be exactly what it sounds like. Built by the Nottingham Corporation Water Department between 1881 and 1884, it pumped water from the sandstone aquifer below the ground to provide clean drinking water to the increasingly industrialising city of Nottingham. It's now a working museum, one of only a few pumping stations in the UK that's preserved in full working order. It was restored from 1975 onwards and was formally opened in 2005 by the Duke of Gloucester. Here we're inside the beautifully ornate engine house which has stunning Victorian decorations. Mechanically, two beam engines built by James Watt and Company were supplied with steam from six Lancashire style boilers. The man you can see and hear in some of these shots is John Noble, the secretary of the Papplewick Association. He was kind enough to let me capture the entire site for this video. 
So everybody that works here does so on a voluntary basis, apart from one person, according to John. Um, not quite sure who that person is, but he's the only one who gets paid. Everybody else does it for the love of this building and for everything it used to do. So we've seen the inside of it. So what's on the outside? Let's go and find out. The outside of the pumping station is arguably just as amazing as the inside. Out here we have a massive 120 foot high chimney, which according to John is soon to be repointed. Don't stand too close. The main house was designed by an architect called Marriott Ogle Tarbotton, originally Nottingham's borough engineer from 1859 onwards. He was the same man who designed the world famous Trent Bridge, which spans the river in the city. Parts of the building are to be restored, including this porch, with the aid of a heritage lottery grant. In front of the engine house is a cooling pond where steam used by the engines condenses back into water. It can hold one and a quarter million gallons of water. It now doubles as an ornate water feature often used by the Association Model Boat Club. Within the grounds is a house which was once lived in by the pumping station's superintendent. And even though the old station doesn't pump water anymore, there is a modern pumping station within the grounds. There's no grand beam engines or boilers in here though. So you too can come here and enjoy this fantastic building and all the history that goes with it. It's open on Wednesdays and Sundays and a guided tour will cost you four pounds. Princely sum really when you think about it. For the magnificence of this building and everything inside it, it's well worth the four quid, I'm telling you. Come and have a look, you won't be disappointed. The reason the pumping station is where it is, is because it stands over the deepest point of the sandstone aquifer, right on the edge of Papplewick Moor, which separates the pumping station from the village itself. Papplewick Moor is what we're now driving through via both the A60 and a road named Blidith Way. At one time it was literally a moor with no houses or any kind of civilization. The edge of the moor was considered to be the southern gateway to Sherwood Forest. Now things are a little different. We're now entering Papplewick Village and in a moment we'll be turning right into Hall Lane, named as such for an obvious reason. It refers to Papplewick Hall, which was built between 1781 and 1787 for Frederick Montague and it's believed to have been the work of William Lindley of Doncaster. Montague was an MP and a member of the Whigs. His father, Charles, was the Auditor General of the Duchy of Cornwall. He died unmarried in Papplewick in 1800. So our main walk won't cover this area, which is why I've driven to it, but I'm here for another reason anyway, and that's because this is where you'll find the Papplewick Parish Council notice board. You may well be new watching me here, seeing as it's the first one I've done in Gedling. This is what I do when I find one of these, plonk one of these on them, TVI card, to mark that it's been done. There we go, it's just about staying on. Papplewick is in the books. Our main walk begins right in the middle of the village on the B6011, which connects the A60 to the town of Hucknall, over the border into Ashfield. 
Our finishing point later will be a bus shelter on the same road. Let's walk up Main Street and it's one of the most beautiful residential roads you'll find anywhere in Nottinghamshire. It sits within Papplewick's conservation area, the boundaries of which encompass the village's historic core. The conservation area was first designated in 1973. The people are nice too. I read countless articles before coming here which all mentioned a strong sense of community and how everyone looks out for each other. Papplewick doesn't have a lot of amenities but you can at least get a bus here. The service you need is the 141 which links Nottingham to Sutton in Ashfield. You can also get a cuppa as well. This is Morton's Farm Tea Rooms whose customer base includes a fair amount of ramblers who come to the village to enjoy its many walks. Okay, so the hat and the glasses have gone on now because the sun is starting to peek through the clouds, which is a good thing. Now, when you reach Papplewick Lodge, you are then on a footpath. And this path runs to Linby. And it also takes you towards the Church of St. James. Let's go down there. The current Church of St. James, which stands within the grounds of Papplewick Hall, was rebuilt in 1795. However, there's been a church on this site since at least the 12th century. As Papplewick was the headquarters of the royal foresters who tended to the upkeep of the king's forests, almost by default St. James's Church was their burial place. Here you'll come across several medieval grave slabs which show bows, arrows and hunting horns for that very reason. Foresters cut their bows from the surrounding yew trees, and according to legend, Robin Hood did the same. Speaking of him, according to some versions of his legend, it was in this very churchyard where Robin Hood is believed to have first met a distressed man named Alan Adale, who he would go on to help regain his sweetheart Ellen from an arranged marriage to an old nobleman. Leaving the church behind, we're now heading for one of the village's surrounding areas of woodland, accessible via a network of public footpaths. Okay, so now we're into a wooded area. What we're doing effectively here is following the Papplewick Trail, which runs alongside a lot of water and even across it at one point as well. This will take us out of the parish boundaries, but it will take us back to Limby Lane, so we can find our way back into them fairly easily. Uh, hopefully I don't get lost in here. This is the Papplewick Trail which follows the course of the River Lean. In the 18th century the river here was very important because it was used to power water mills. The Lean's water was transported down through the valley and it was controlled by a series of sluices. There were several mills on the lean, three of them close to Papplewick village. One of the trail's best features is a dam which has this beautiful waterfall which looks and sounds awesome. Water powered mills on the lean have been a thing since at least the 13th century but it wasn't until the 18th when their importance became greater. Many of them were run by one family, the Robinsons, headed by a man named George. The Robinsons were granted leases by Frederick Montague, allowing them to erect new mills to process cotton. It became lucrative and children from workhouses as far away as St Marlebon in London were brought in to help work them. Now I know we've seen a stunning building already today in the uh, form of Papplewick pumping station, but I'm just passing another stunning building here. I don't know how much I'm going to see of this because there are trees in the way, but this house here appears to be almost like a castle. If I just come to the end of this hedgerow, you might be able to see what I mean. It's got sort of two towers that have got battlements on the top. Uh, you can't really see them. You can't really see them. They're, one of the towers is there in the middle, battlements behind that tree. That's really annoying. What's the name of this? Castle Mill. Ah, Castle Mill. Hmm, so is it a castle or is it a mill? Who knows? We'll be back to the Papplewick Trail shortly. To get there, we're passing through Papplewick Village Hall, which has a playing field and a playground to the rear. This is where we find the local war memorial which honours the three men who were lost in World War I. 
St. James's Church also has two memorial tablets, one for each of the World Wars. Now we're back on the Papawick Trail, accessible from the playing field. This part of the trail is known as Moor Pond Wood. There was once a reservoir in here called Moor Pond, the remains of which can be seen here from this bridge. It was drained and the area was forested sometime before 1881. The path through the wood leads to Moor Road and to the Griffin's Head pub. Believed to be over 300 years old, the pub is a listed building and it's included within Papawick's conservation area. Lastly, the big building on the corner opposite, once a late 18th century farmhouse which has now been split into two houses, known as Number One and The Barn. So I'm back at the bus shelter where we began. That has been the parish of Papplewick, and if the rest of Gedling is like this, boy are you in for a treat. Now before we leave Papplewick behind, I need to talk a bit more about Castle Mill because it'll become important in next week's Gedling episode. Even though we passed it on the walking route, Castle Mill actually belongs to Linby, the next parish over to the west. It was originally known as Robinson's Mill and was only later known as Castle Mill due to its pseudo battlements. It has never been a castle, but it most definitely was a water mill. It was built in around 1780 and was owned and run by the Robinsons, hence the name. It was built as a cotton mill originally, but would eventually be used to grind corn instead in 1851. That was long after the mills on the lean had stopped cotton spinning in 1828. All of them except Castle Mill, Forge Mill and Forest Mill were dismantled in the 1850s. Since the 1950s, Castle Mill has been a private house. Keep this mill in mind for next week. In Linby, I can show you where some of its workers once lived. And with all that said and done, we're now off to Linby, passing Castle Mill on the way. If you thought Papplewick was lovely, you haven't seen anything yet. Linby is considered the prettiest village this side of Nottingham, and boy does it have some history to go with it. Come back next week and join me for a walk around it. Bye for now. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out. <laughs>